Hello and welcome to the Tuesday, October 31st, 2023 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Yesterday I talked about how multicast DNS leaked Mac addresses in iOS and macOS. And I figured this may be a good opportunity to talk a little bit more about multicast DNS. It's certainly not a new problem or a new protocol, but often overlooked. And just want to point out that there is an awful lot of data that's often being multicast to the network that identifies individual hosts regardless of the MAC address. In particular, on iOS and macOS devices, the host name that's often being broadcast here includes by default the username and then you always also see the exact hardware version including interestingly the color of the particular device that you're using and also operating system version is being sent to the network this is really sort of more intended for a home network small business networks where you heavily rely on systems being able to auto discover uh, resources like uh, printers or uh, in the sort of apple ecosystem uh, things uh, like a video streaming system it's not limited to apple uh, android linux microsoft windows all of them use pretty much the same protocol and are sending these messages the problem then really becomes apparent if you are connecting such a device to a public network and you're basically advertising yourself to everybody connected to that network, the quickest, simplest fix here to me is just to name your system something that's not easily identifiable and associated with you. But other than that, you're pretty much left with sort of setting up uh, firewall rules in order to prevent uh, these packets from uh, leaving your system. There's often no simple way to actually turn it off. And well, in iOS, actually not aware of any real good way to turn this off, given that there isn't really a firewall that you could utilize. Yeah, and let me know if uh, you have a good idea uh, to uh, block a multicast DNS in iOS. And then something I probably should have covered yesterday but uh, didn't get to is a critical vulnerability in the Kubernetes Ingress Nginx. When you're using a Kubernetes, you typically use a proxy in front of it. Uh, that's uh, then sort of part of that uh, Ingress uh, controller, Nginx uh, being sort of the most popular option here. And that's where Ingress Nginx uh, comes in. The problem with this vulnerability is that it does allow arbitrary code injection into Ingress Nginx. That particular process has uh, access to all kinds of secrets, including also secret TLS uh, keys and the like. And uh, they are then extractable if an attacker injects the right or wrong, depending on what site you're on, code into Ingress Nginx. CVE 2023-54-3, a patch for Ingress Nginx has been released in version 1.9, and I'll link uh, to the GitHub repo where I have a couple more details as to which configurations exactly are affected. And Google now completed the rollout of HTTPS upgrades. This feature has been sort of trickling out uh, starting back in July, but as of October 16th now, all versions of Google Chrome in the stable channel are using this HTTPS upgrades feature. What this means is that, uh, well, what is really sort of known as strict transport security is now the default and the browser will first attempt to connect via HTTPS and only use HTTP if the website is not reachable via HTTPS. So that's of a reversal of the 
usual uh, default behavior in the past. You can still force it to go to HTTP by actually using an HTTP prefix in the URL, unless of course strict transport security is enabled for this domain. Where this will cause some confusion is if you have things like you know the usual IoT device and such that only have an HTTP based web interface or where you have HTTPS with bad certificates that's where you will get warning and may even in my experience have problems connecting at all. And one of the notable vulnerabilities in the last patch Tuesday was a vulnerability in WordPad that led to information disclosure. The problem here was that the information disclosed were password hashes and we do now have a proof of concept exploit available for this vulnerability as sort of expected really all it takes is an OLE object in the document that you're opening with WordPad that refers to an SMB resource and that will trigger the outbound connection to this resource. And with the proof of concept being out there expect to see some exploitation of this already being under away. Well, that's it for today. Thanks again for listening, for voting, for recommending this podcast, for giving us good reviews in various podcast platforms. Thanks and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.